Hi everyone. You ever notice how we try to make ourselves happy by trying to get things we really want? We swear we'll be happy if we could just have that new gadget or pair of shoes or whatever it is we're dying to have. We get it, we're happy for a little bit, and then after a while, we're back to our baseline. This is called hedonic adaptation, and it's why we never find long-lasting happiness from outside circumstances. The secret to happiness is wanting what you have instead of always trying to have what you want. So how do we do that? I'd like to share a story that I'm hoping will help. When I was in fifth grade, a girl named Menorah moved into my school. With almost nothing to her name, Menorah's mother picked herself up one day, left her husband, and moved with her only daughter from Puerto Rico to New York. She moved into a small bungalow colony that was converted into housing, found herself a job, enrolled her daughter in school, and started a new life. Menorah and I became fast friends. At the time, I knew that she had less than most of the other kids at school, but somehow she always seemed happy and never seemed bothered by what she didn't have. At the same time, I noted a sharp contrast to some of my other friends who never had enough and loved to complain. Over the years, I was a silent observer of the situation, and while Menorah and I are friends to this day, I never spoke to her about any of this until now. In anticipation of recording this message, I reached out to Menorah. I told her what I noticed when we were kids. I told her how impressed I was, and I asked her how she did it. Here's what she said. I knew things were bad, but why should I focus on the negatives? I had no control over the situation. There were times when we didn't have enough money for food and my mom and I would just feast on potatoes. Menora also told me that she even felt grateful for her situation because it gave her perspective on some of the typical drama that most kids were dealing with and her situation allowed her not to get caught up in it. Then I asked her how she was able to keep this perspective and she gave me these two tips. First, Recognize that life isn't always fair, and it's up to you to make lemonade out of lemons. Even when you're a victim of circumstance, you don't have to be a victim. There is good that can be found in any situation. And second, recognize that things are impersonal. For example, when someone cuts you off in traffic, it's natural to react, but then recognize that it was not about you and get over it. Now I realize that not everyone can be as wise as this little fifth grader was. Some people are just more hardwired to see the good in situations than others. But the good news is that this mindset is something that you can practice and get better at. To get started, it's helpful to recognize that our brains are built with something called a negativity bias. Evolution has us hardwired so that we are more keenly aware of the negatives our environment in order to keep us safe. I heard someone years ago call this the poison berry effect, meaning our ancestors needed to remember what a poison berry looked like or it would be their end. From a survival perspective, it's not as important to remember the good things in life. And so this is why we are hardwired to remember and hold on to negative experiences so tightly, more so than the positive ones. This negativity bias no longer serves us in our regular day-to-day -day lives, but it is still our default mode that is left over from those cave days. But there is hope for us. Much like we build our physical muscles with exercise, we can build our positivity muscles and actually become more happy by practicing or exercising gratitude. When we express gratitude, our brain actually releases dopamine and serotonin, which are neurotransmitters that make us feel good. They enhance our mood and make us feel happy from the inside. By intentionally practicing gratitude, we strengthen those neural pathways in our brains and can create a natural sense of positivity. Think about this. It is not happiness that brings us gratitude. It is gratitude that brings us happiness. So with this in mind and the Thanksgiving season approaching, I have a gratitude challenge for you this month. I hope you all did the last challenge about stress. Here it is. For the next 30 days, find three things to be grateful for each day, no matter how small. 
Okay, you might wake up filled with negative thoughts, but just find something. Be grateful for the fact that you don't have a headache or a backache or something even just that small. What you focus on grows, and the more you pay attention to gratitudes, the more grateful you will become. Some people to like, to like to journal their gratitudes, and the act of writing has actually been shown to be very effective in enhancing the effect. Do this for 30 days and see if anything shifts in your mood and perspective. You really might be surprised. Before I say goodbye, I have a personal gratitude to share. I am grateful for all of you, the work you do every day, and for all the families at Allied who trust us to care for their kids. I also want to give a great big thank you to my friend Menorah for allowing me to share her story and for being such an amazing friend. Have a great holiday season, everyone. Thank you.